Hey everybody, Alex Goff here. We're here with Dan Payne, uh, former uh, on-back flanker and uh, <laughs> former uh, San Diego State head well, coach, yeah. former Life head coach, former athletic director at Life, and soon to be former CEO of USA Rugby. Uh, and the news is just out that uh, you're not going to be renewing uh, your contract. You're going to be stepping away. So what's the deal? Is this like a rat leaving a sinking ship, or is it some some other kind of better metaphor? Well, no, I think that's a lot of formers. Jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, I think uh, everything I've done, you know, it's a lot of formers that have all been based around rugby, yeah. and uh, you know, the last fifteen to twenty years of my life, every every d really major decision I've made has been based around rugby, and uh, you know, this is really no different. I think the one big variable now is. Uh, you know, having a young family, and, sure. and we're having our second child in August. You Great. know, and there's yeah. just there's a lot of things that I'm excited about. That um, you know, this just kind of makes it be a good time to good you know, having carried the baton for the last couple of years, you know, kind of continuing to work in and around the sport and growing the sport. But uh, you know, there's some exciting things uh, that I'm going to you know pursue as well. Okay. So. What what surprised you about the job? Um, I, I don't, uh, you know, I think for me it was a little bit different in that obviously we had a perfect storm of adversity that yeah, came sure. about probably starting about the third or fourth week uh, yeah. in the position when we, when we started realizing the, um, the difficulty that 2016 was going to finish with and then how we were going to have to manage and build a budget and a plan for 2017 and knowing that we really, you know, we want to keep pushing forward and yeah driving for incremental growth and um, we we're going to have to try to execute everything we did with a lot less resources than we thought we were going to have available. Right. So that was surprising but we adjusted and I think when you look back um, it was a great experience um, to be able to gain a lot of knowledge and insight and you know really ex valuable experience that you, I wouldn't have otherwise. Well you know when you have a finance you had a big financial hole and yep. we were talking how much Million dollars, seven, 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 yeah, seven yeah. figures. And okay, yeah. all right, seven so, plus, <laughs> seven, right. So, uh, multi, you know, a million and a half, two million dollars. Um, that really forces you to go through everything and say, do we really need this? Well, you know, how does this come together? I mean, sure. you, you kind of have to like take it all apart. Yeah, well, and, and we did, and I think you know, no one looked for excuses, and you know, the the staff, the community. I think that's what really surprised me is so many supportive people throughout our community understood what we were up against. Um, you know, in 2017, I think from a, from an, especially from a high performance perspective, um, you know, our collectively, our four national teams probably performed as well as they ever yeah, have. And true. the women taking fourth, finishing very high on the series, you know, fourth in the World Cup, and then the yeah. men finishing where they did on the series and qualifying as the America's ones for 15s yeah. in the men's. Um, so I was really happy and, and proud of our coaches and everybody that, and the staff and all the players. You know, they had to, they had to work very hard, but that's rugby in America. Right. You, you have to work hard. You know, so. It, it, it kind of shows really that, I mean, the idea of the dedication and the, the heart of the players, let's say, and a lot of volunteer coaches, all that stuff, that doesn't go away. No, not, no, right. I think, yeah. I think, and that's, you know, that's probably, uh, you know, as everyone always says, professionalism and that standard doesn't come with money alone. Yeah, right? and, sure. and our players and our staff and everybody was able to uphold a level of professionalism and commitment to the game despite having to face through some adversity and we're, we're better on the other side of it now. All right, good. What, okay, so what did you not like about the job? Um, what was most difficult? Well, I think, I think, uh, I think well, it's funny, looking back now on a two-year span, I can think in, in fits and starts, but, you know, it, it's... Um, there's always, you know, I, I spent more times probably saying no <laughs> than <laughs> yes, just because yeah. that was the situation we were in. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it, I, I wasn't shocked. There, what you don't like is, the hardest part for me, I really came in with really wanting to really put a lot of emphasis on youth. Yeah. And we weren't able to generate the resources to be able to really go. I mean, we placed some yeah. regional development officers and things, um, and we're, we're growing the pre-high school rugby still. Just wasn't able to do it from a robust perspective the way I would have liked to, but we still found ways to, you know, I think one of the quotes that I picked up throughout the time was you can't complain about not having resources, you have to get resourceful. Yeah. And, uh, and we had to do that quite a bit, and, yeah. and a lot of people did it, from the coaches to the players to our community um, to the staff at headquarters, um, you know, and I think it's just, it, we have to continue to manage expectations, but not use, not look for excuses. Okay. So. Uh, financial uh, digging out of the financial hole aside, and you have put money 
a side now. You're, yeah. you're, you're right, you've got a little bit of a reserve. Well, so yeah, so that, that's actually, let me report on that. Okay, that's okay. great. That's okay. actually one of the things, you know, when you're through it, it's exciting to be able to say we, we, we built the plan, we managed to, we managed to plan and, um, and hit our budget figures with bringing some money back to the balance sheet, brought some equity back to the balance sheet. We just officially closed 2017 a couple of weeks ago and uh, we're able to contribute money to contingency reserve. Good. So, you know, we were able to, to, to nail the, the goals we put forth and, you know, leave the organization in a stronger place. Uh, Is that somebody's phone? That's my phone. You're going to cut that out or you're going to leave it in? Yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to leave it in. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice Hey, you got to just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Right. It's high. It's kind of an sort of, odd, yeah. odd ringtone. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. Is that's, that? that's the uh, theme music to Orphan Black. Actually. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. So. Just got even odder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty odd. Uh, you, okay, so that's great news on the, on the financial side. What, what are, give me something else you're proud of, you're really happy that. Um, um, oh, well, you know. I'll tell you. Uh, I think it was great for me to be able to watch the, uh, in the short term, last year when we had the men's and women's event here for the Sevens. Uh, we're going to bring back uh, the Sevens event for the women great. to domestic stop next great. year. It's okay. probably going to be, it's going to be in the fall, October time. Um, can't announce who just yet, but it's, it, you can probably figure it out fairly easily. I'm really excited to be partnering with the, the group that's bringing the event back to sure. the United States. I'm happy for our women. So we'll have the World Cup and the sevens, nice. you know, okay. stop in here. And I think if, if you look at today, uh, our, our men just won the ARC down in Uruguay with yeah. a very convincing and impressive showing. Yeah. And our men here at the same time with the sevens have jumped through their pool and, yeah. and impressed yeah. everybody here, you know. So I continue to be inspired by our athletes. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I continue to be inspired by all those people on the ground that are just yeah. driving the game forward. That's good. What's next for you? Um, that, you know, it's... Uh, probably not in a position to be able to say just yet. Okay. But is uh, there a plan B? I mean, is there a, a plan A maybe? Well, I tell you the thing that I'm most excited about. What's next for me is we're having another baby this that's true. this, that's, this, that's uh, a, that's this summer, and we're gonna have right. a first daughter to join our family. So that's we'll great. see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the next yeah. thing for me from a um, you know work work situation is is uh, you know there's several different things, but pretty exciting. You know, something I'm, I'm looking forward to. So. Um, about as vague an answer. That's as that's baby. pretty. That's pretty. Vague. See how he led with the baby though. Yeah, that's oh, good. It's like distracted oh, with the baby. <laughs> babies. Everybody loves yeah. babies. Oh, she's gonna be so cute. Yeah. That's good. well, um, <laughs> goes without saying. And uh, um, somebody's going to replace you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, obviously, I think it's going to be Mike Teo. Mm. After today, yeah, Mike. Uh, yeah. Mike, Mike I, I think it could be Mike. Yeah. You know, it could be Zach Test. You yeah. know, it might be you. I, I, you uh, know what? We're going to save Zach, and Zach's going to start contributing to the coaching side of things. Sure. And yeah. He's, but he's. I'm looking forward I mean, to I'm watching. I'm making him. a joke. I don't mean to make a joke. That, that it's been, just the the idea that sometimes it's like you want to grab someone who everybody loves today yeah. and just say, uh, w what kind of um, what kind of person, what kind of qualities does this job need? Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, it, it just it needs somebody <clears throat> that can relate to the community and and relate to the the obstacles in within our country and be able to understand that coming in. Yep. Um, you know, and that's why <clears throat> I've been around rugby in America long enough that it, I always knew. You know, if I came in with a hundred percent, I was leaving with seventy percent of the friends I had when I came yeah. in. Just, just be the yeah. nature yeah. of the yeah. game, sure. right? Like it's you have to make some tough decisions and you get put in, and, and they're not you know, terminal endings yeah. to my, my friendships, but you have to make some tough decisions. And when you're in, in a membership organization, especially within our community, um, you know, you have to, you have to know that coming in, but you really, I think if it, somebody has to be, you know, the woman or the man that would replace me would be somebody that's just principled and really passionate about growing the game and carrying the baton, so to speak, for growing rugby in America. It's a, it's a growth organization. Does it have to be a rugby person? Um, I, I think with I, I think it's helpful. Obviously, yeah. I, you know, I, you don't ever want to pigeonhole something into you know. When yeah. I when I look at some of the things that were my shortcomings and or areas that I feel I could have done better at, um, you know, you can see where a non-rugby person might have different skill sets. Yeah. But at the same time, I think you have that one of the greatest things that that I've been able to you know lean on in the last two years were just you know a decade of knowing. The relationships and the different dynamics within the American rugby scene, and having those personal relationships you can lean on, 
you know, in different times yeah. when you need to either get an opinion or, or make a tough decision and people know why, you know, they trust in right. what you're doing. So I, th I think it, I think, and w there's some exciting times ahead. There's, okay. there's a lot of excitement and energy. So I think, I think it definitely should be somebody with a background in rugby, but to what extent and where do you find the, the balancing point between rugby and a lot of the other things yeah. that somebody could bring in some. All right. So to sum up, fair to say you're, you're not, you're not leaving because it's all going to hell and you're sick of this crap. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I would say. Oh, it's a fair question. Yeah, yeah. fair question. I, I, I was going to make a joke, but <laughs> getting, I was going to say my, ba my daughter, my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, Babies. no. Uh, I think it's, it's a lot about, you know, some, some exciting opportunities, you know, feeling confident and comfortable in what we've been able to do the last two years, given the circumstances yeah. that we had to, to grind through. And to be honest, it's, um, you know, I did 160,000 United miles last year. And we're having another baby, right? That's and a lot and of so miles, it's, yeah. you know, it, it, there, there's a balancing act there that I want to be around for the formative years of my kids' lives. And, you know, so there's a little bit of that there as well. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. All right. Dan Payne, thank you very much. All right. Thank All you. Right, All right. Take care. Boom. Hold it. One more, one more thing. We'll just, I'll just add this in the end. Just real quick. This is a goofy one. All right. What, what is more likely this spring? Ombak wins the PRP or Life wins D1A. Ooh, ooh, ooh! My daughter is gonna be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All okay. Right. All right. Cool. Right. All right. That's 100. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Thank you.